From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening, I want to talk a few minutes about a pancreatic pseudocyst. It's basically present as a pseudocyst. It is mo its most common location is less of sac, but it can present in neck, or even mediastinum, or even pelvis. Isn't it interesting? So pancreatic pseudocyst can even happen in the neck, mediastinum, or pelvis. And it is bound by a wall formed out of inflammatory fibrosis, either through peritoneum or mesentery or serosal membranes. So those membranes, they limit the spread of uh, the juice from the pancreas and they limit the spread of uh, that inflammation. So you see, it's a called pseudocyst because a cyst is something, is a cavity lined by epithelium, but in pseudocyst it doesn't have an epithelium. So pancreatic pseudocyst doesn't have a true epithelium. It has a wall formed out of inflammatory fibrosis. That's why we call this pancreatic pseudocyst. And most of these, many of these uh, pancreatic pseudocysts happen as a result of uh, acute pancreatitis because of the extravasation of uh, pancreatic juice and also the glandular necrosis and the glandular necrosis you see as the tissue breaks up and dies a cavity forms and out of that cavity uh, the fluid accumulates most of the times this is a sterile fluid but many times super infection of this sterile fluid happens and uh, that becomes a pancreatic abscess so now let us see the most common things. Many times pancreatic pseudocyst can happen without acute pancreatitis. That's an important point. It doesn't have to be always acute pancreatitis then pancreatic pseudocyst. Pancreatic pseudocyst can happen without acute pancreatitis. And it can go beyond the confines of the gland. So there is post Pancreat, uh, a post pancreatitis pseudocyst and also sometimes when there is trauma to the abdomen trauma to the pancreas that can result in a pancreatic pseudocyst like iatrogenic causes like uh, when the patient has a splenectomy or some external blow to the abdomen what happens is there is this inflammation starts that inflammation can cause pancreatic pseudocysts and the cysts are single in 85% of the time and multiple in 15% of the time so you see folks you can make them like two different classification based on etiology number one post pancreatitis pancreatic pseudocyst number two post traumatic pancreatic pseudocyst remember those things it will be easy to remember the etiology so the post pancreatitis pancreatic pseudocyst and post-traumatic pancreatic pseudocyst. And how do you diagnose them? The most common thing is a CT scan. When you see a serious, a severe pancreatitis, and when you suspect a pseudocyst, take a CT scan. And the CT scan, it gives a very good detail of the pancreatic pseudocyst. And the first clinical manifestation is usually a palpable tender mass in the epigastrium. So, radiologically, CT scan is good, but clinically, you, need, you, you feel a tender mass in the epigastrium. And that mass may be subtle. You may not even find it in many patients, but when you find it, it causes a uh, lot of distress to the patient. It will be there in the epigastrium, and you feel it, a tender mass is felt in the epigastrium. So that is the first clinical manifestation of uh, this problem. Now, pain. 
there can be pain, there can be favor, there can be weight loss, there can be tenderness, there can be palpable mass, but these symptoms may not present in all patients. So, it, it, the symptoms could be wide-ranging. I mean, some of them can have even jaundice because of the obstruction of the intrapancreatic segment of the bile duct. You remember the bile duct joins the pancreatic duct. So, this bile duct, it could be um, obstructed and can, can cause jaundice. And many of these patients uh, develop uh, elevation of a serum amylase and elevation of uh, bilirubin. And what is what is uh, is telling you? There is biliary obstruction. When you see elevated bilirubin, there is biliary obstruction. And sometimes the serum amylase, it raises. I mean, it could raise after pancreatitis. But if it is raising even after three weeks after pancreatitis, you should definitely think about uh, pancreatic pseudocyst. As I said, the radiologic diagnostic study of choice is a CT scan. You can see the size of the cyst. You can see the shape of the cyst. And acute pseudocyst often, they, they, they will have an irregular shape. But chronic pseudocysts, they take a circular form. And by that circular form, you can say it's a chronic one. And an enlarged pancreatic duct may be demonstrated in patients with uh, pancre chronic pancreatitis. And a dilated common bile duct would suggest biliary obstruction because this cyst causing increased pressure and that pressure is dilating the common bile duct. So if you do a diagnostic study like ultrasound, you will see a enlarged common bile duct. The other test you can do is an ultrasound. For example, a patient with acute pancreatitis and if you think etiology could be a gallstone, you need to do an ultrasound to see for any gallstones in the gallbladder. And then you can actually do ultrasound even to find a pancreatic pseudocyst, but ultrasound may not give as much detail as a CT scan. That's why a CT scan is always a good study to start with. But you are not going to do a CT scans every week because that, that would be very expensive and also you would be exposing patient to unnecessary radiation. So once you take a CT scan first, then you can follow up with ultrasound. I mean the size of the pancreatic pseudocyst. The other study is the ERCP. ERCP, you can do it whenever you think there, are, there could be abnormalities in the bile or pancreatic ducts. So in the CT scan, if you see any abnormalities of a pancreatic duct or bile duct or elevated liver function test, then you should go with an ERCP. So the ERCP helps even in the surgical drainage in conjunction with the drainage of the uh, pseudocyst. So through ERCP, you can actually drain the common bile duct and also you can drain the pancreatic pseudocyst. Now differential diagnosis. Pancreatic pseudocyst should be differentiated from pancreatic uh, abscess. And patients with a pancreatic abscess, they usually exhibit signs of infection like fever, elevated WBC, that kind of stuff. And uh, patients with uh, um, pseudocyst, they can also present with non-tender palpable gallbladder. You see, sometimes the cyst becomes like it occupies so much space in the belly and every organ in the vicinity feel the effect of it, like a, the gallbladder might increase in the size. The other thing I want to tell you is neoplastic pancreatic cyst that we see in cyst adenoma and cyst adenocarcinoma. So about 5% of all causes of cystic pancreatic masses may be due to cancer. So a pancreatic pseudocyst is actual, could be actually a cancer. So you need to think of that. And if there is any doubt, you should do the biopsy. Because only biopsy establishes what is a pseudocyst and what is a cancer. Now, complications of pancreatic pseudocyst. There are three things. Infection, 
rupture, hemorrhage. Those three things. Infection, rupture, hemorrhage. Infection, it results in high fever and chills and leukocytosis. So whenever the pancreatic pseudocyst gets infected, it presents with those signs of infection. So you need to drain these kind of symptoms because the complications are severe. Either you can drain it externally via a catheter under like a, a percutaneous catheter drainage using ultrasound guidance. Or you can use internal drainage, internal drainage of infected pseudocyst. Like you can, um, for example, if the pseudocyst is added into stomach, you can actually do a cystogastrostomy and do that drainage internally. So the external drainage or internal drainage. External drainage may not be uh, uh, a good idea because sometimes the walls of the cyst are very fragile. The next complication is rupture. Many times the rupture of the pancreatic pseudocyst into the peritoneum resulting in chemical peritonitis. And uh, the patient develops bored like abdominal rigidity and severe abdominal pain. So rapid enlargement of the pseudocyst is sometimes uh, 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 it could be succeeded by the rupture. The treatment is emergency surgery. You need to irrigate the peritoneal cavity with uh, tons and tons of saline and you need to drain that uh, pancreatic pseudocyst. And the wall of a ruptured pseudocyst is usually too fragile. So if you see uh, a ruptured pseudocyst, you don't do suturing to that. You need to drain it externally using a catheter. So the rupture of a pancreatic pseudocyst is, uh, uh, happens. It could happen up to 5% of pancreatic pseudocyst. And the rupture has serious complications like peritonitis. So remember that folks, rupture can happen up to 5% of cases and uh, the treatment is emergency surgery. The third complication is hemorrhage. Bleeding may happen into the cavity of the pancreatic pseudocyst and the bleeding could be severe. I mean you see if there is a this big pancreatic pseudocyst and the bleeding happens into the pseudocyst, the patient may lose a lot of blood. And that, if there is uh, any connection between the pseudocyst and uh, the belly, uh, sorry, stomach, the patient can actually present with hematemesis or melina. And uh, sometimes if you put a nasogastric tube, you can see blood in the nasogastric uh, aspirin. So the blood can come out. So you, you see how many different, different ways the pancreatic pseudocyst can manifest clinically, just boggles the mind. And if the blood loss is too severe, the patient can develop hemorrhagic shock. And what you should do, if you have time, you should immediately do an arteriography. And the arteriography, it shows where exactly the patient is bleeding. And when you see the site of bleeding, you should immediately embolize it. It's like a radiologic uh, procedure. So that embolization following by radiography is the treatment of choice when there is a severe hemorrhage into the pancreatic pseudocyst. And sometimes false aneurysms, they happen in the wall of the pancreatic pseudocyst. So you need to identify the site through arteriography and then to embolize. And if embolization doesn't help, then patient should have immediate surgery. Emergency surgery is the treatment of choice. So you see folks, the three important complications, the rupture, the hemorrhage, and uh, uh, what is the other thing I said, the infection. Those are the three things. Those are the three important complications. And each of them, they they, they present it their own clinical manifestations. So remember the complications and uh, remember the clinical manifestations. Remember the diagnostic studies. So those are the most important points. In the next video I will talk about the treatment.
the treatment of pancreatic pseudocyst. cyst. Please follow me with the next video. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.